Cock of the North by Ken May The ground almost trembled as the steam engine rattled into the yard. The harvest was over for this year, and apparently was over for the Cock of the North, forever. Grandpa was the boss of the steam engine. He kept it oiled, greased, watered, and fired. Next to horses, it was dear to his heart. The steam engine moved slowly across the yard as Grandpa parked it on the lee side of a row of Manitoba maples. Grandpa smiled as he leaned over to pull the steam whistle one last time. He knew what havoc it would create in the house as the kids would attempt to hide under the table holding their ears. Elsie, his son's wife, would be calming kids and hurrying supper along so as to be prepared for the threshing gang. They were always ravenous. Grandpa moved around the steam engine with his dust cloth, wiping off bits of dirt and grease as he said goodbye. He stood in front of the steam engine and wiped for the last time the gold embossed cock, or rooster, that stood proudly on the fire door and gave the steam engine its name, the Cock of the North. Farming was changing so quickly. Grandpa had homesteaded the land, and now his son Earl was taking over with all his new ideas. Imagine thinking that a green John Deere D could replace the horses pulling the plow and the steam engine driving the threshing machine. "'What role will I play?' Grandpa asked himself. He had always been consulted regarding what crops on which fields, when to sow and when to harvest. No more." Not with that green demon sitting in the yard. Grandpa adjusted. He wasn't the harvest boss or the farm planner, but he could still weed the garden, feed the chooks, slop the hogs, milk the cows, and, of course, drive his car, a whippet, out to the field carrying lunch to haying or harvesting crews. This is the grandpa that I remember so well. He lived in a bungalow about a hundred yards from the main farmhouse, and in later years he always ate his meals with the family. I fondly recall the faded denim smock jacket Grandpa wore with an aging cardigan sweater underneath the jacket. Sometimes the kids would hover near him in hopes that he would reach into the sweater pocket and pull out a mint. We would always accept the mint, but would half turn away to pick the sweater lint from the mint before popping the candy into our mouths. The steam engine aged badly. It quickly rusted, and the hands and feet of many kids tearing across its surface hastened the aging. Grandpa did his best to keep us off the cock of the north, but seven kids were too much of a challenge in his mature years. Grandpa aged slowly and wisely. He continued through his eighties, changing little. Perhaps the wrinkles deepened a little. Perhaps the nose became more prominent. Perhaps the evening walk to his bungalow became a little more tentative. He maintained a good sense of humor and a keen interest in everything that happened on the farm. As the ninth decade closed in on him, he became consumed with concern over losing his mental faculties and acting in an uncontrolled, rash manner. One night, when he was about age ninety, he came into the farmhouse, hung up his smock coat, sat in an easy chair near the door, leaned his chin on his hand on his cane between his legs and called for his grandson, Ken, to come and have a chat. Now, I was about ten years old, was stretching up and knew most anything of importance. He said, Ken, I'm getting older, and right now my mind is still sound, but it won't always be safe to be around me. I smiled probably a bit of a cocky smile, and I thought that it would always be safe to be around Grandpa. He knew that he hadn't quite got through to me, so he banged his cane on the floor and he said, Be careful around me. You know I care for you, but if I lose control, I could hit you and hit you hard with my cane. I looked towards Mother, who was in the kitchen with us, and knew she would help me to understand what was happening. Like the cock of the north, Grandpa was starting to rust. 